that we have, a, have entitled Divine Nomenclature. It's the second of this series. And it has to do with key scriptural words upon which a great deal of truth is suspended. Words are containers. Ideas come in them. Your theology is only as strong as your words. If you have loose speech, your theology is flimsy. Your theology is flimsy, it won't sustain you. And it can't be communicated. Amen. You can't, a, a sloppy theology can't be communicated effectively to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to accomplish what God desires. So there's key words that uh, God uses. And they can't all be defined with a dictionary or lexicon. A lot of these words are defined doctrinally, not lexically, or by uh, word definitions. A proper vocabulary is essential for the promotion of understanding. We've got to have the same views. See, truth is solitary. It's single. Uh -huh. The word truth is never used in the plural in the Bible. Never read of truths. It's always singular. Doctrine is the same way. Doctrine, valid doctrine, is never used in the plural. Every time you read doctrines, is doctrines of men. Yeah or false doctrines. Mm -hmm. But truth and doctrine is singular. That is to say, if five different people hear the truth, <coughs> they've got to see the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If it's the same thing, it may be like a diamond or a gem that has a lot of different facets to it, but you're looking at the same, yeah. same thing. And the key to that is words. Mm -hmm. Words. It's imperative that we have the same understanding of God one person can't believe God just lovey-dovey like a kind of a grandfather that dotes on his children and never gets upset, and some people have that idea of God. Some people think of God as just fierce, as like, a, like a mean ogre that's always trying to offend people, looking for a cause to hammer on people, and that's their view of God. Some people think God just doesn't care about anything. He's just like a big brain up in the sky. You've got to have a proper understanding of God himself. you got to see the world alike. When people, when you hear world, mm -hmm. the word world, well, God's people got to have the same understanding about what it is. There may be different depths to it, but you have to know we all have to be talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. World. About issues. There's are certain things in Scripture that accent issues. Mm -hmm. You hear the word repentance. See? It's mm -hmm. telling you God has an issue with sin. You can't just sin up there in the face of God. Amen. If you sin, God insists you've got to change your mind on that. Yeah. Got a suggestion. Mm -hmm. See, and that a word contains that mm -hmm. idea. And salvation. <laughs> what is salvation? Is it just like reform? Is that it? <coughs> just reform. Twelve steps to do better. Is that what salvation is? See, word, that word means something. And the scripture and doctrine. What the scriptures would call the apostles' doctrine, doctrine is a word for teaching, Un unpacks that word. And humanity and Jesus, a lot of things. Words are the thing that define it. Now it is, it is possible to tailor a Jesus that suits your own fancy. Yeah, yeah. That's possible. Mm -hmm. It's to concoct a God and a Jesus and a Bible and a heaven and a spirit that just kind of meets what you think you need. Mm -hmm. Scripture refers to this in 2 Corinthians 11, 4 as another Jesus right. yeah. and another gospel mm -hmm. and another spirit. Mm -hmm. To the unlearned, they all sound the same. But they're not the same. Satan is perpetrating another Jesus, another gospel, another mm -hmm. spirit. One way you have of protecting yourself against being deceived in this, words. Words. Mm -hmm. Now the word I want to deal with tonight is advocate. Advocate. I will tell you up front that one of the great handicaps of a multiplicity of translations of Scripture mm -hmm. is it garbles the vocabulary of the Scripture. That's right. Yeah. Now up until 1957 we didn't have all so many different translations of Scripture. 
But then it was like a proliferation of them, and everyone kind of has just amazing how many there are. I myself personally work with 44 versions of Scripture. Some of them I hesitate to call them Scripture. <laughs> They're so garbled. But that's is one thing it succeeded in doing. This has succeeded in veiling some key words that God uses mm -hmm. so that people don't know what you're talking about. Advocate's one of the words. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not mentioned a lot in Scripture. So very, very, well, in fact, it's in the English version. It's mentioned one time in the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. It's mentioned a couple of times in some of the other what we call foundational translations of Scripture. So it's important to have a proper, proper mm -hmm. view of it. Advocate. Mr. Logan read the text, 1 John 2, 1. Little children. Yeah, that's the way you got to see yourself, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is John writing. He's up in his 90s. He's about Brother John's age, Sister Irene's age when he wrote that. The world, you quit writing when you hit a certain age. You quit writing. Mm -hmm. and he said, the little children, and I, I write these things unto you that you sin not. So that's, that's up front. That's up front what the Bible's all about. That's right up front. Yeah. Right up front was, don't sin. Yeah. Don't be telling people we all sin. Don't sin. That's what it says. Yeah. <laughs> and then he knows that uh, we're, none of us will say, well, I've never sinned, because if you did, John said, you like, you lied. Mm -hmm. yeah. He that said he has no sin is a liar. Truth's mm -hmm. not in him. He just lied. There isn't anyone who hasn't sinned, but that's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. He says, these things I write unto you, little children, that you sin not, but if, mm -hmm. not when, mm -hmm. yeah. not when, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to talk about, advocate. We have an advocate with the Father. Whatever an advocate is, we need one. Amen. Amen. Whatever you may think about God and how much He loves you, how much He cares for you, what He wants, you've got to have an advocate with Him. Yeah. There's got to be some bum between you and Him. Whatever you may think about humanity, whatever you may think about the love of God, God you can't do without Jesus. We have an advocate with the Father. Who is it? Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Mm -hmm. That's whom we have. So let's look at this word, I advocate. If you want to take the literal definition, the etym what we call the etymological definition of the word, the root meaning of the word. Now you've got to know how to read like dictionaries and lexicons. I've known preachers that preach for years and years and years and they still don't know how to read these dictionaries and lexicons. The root meaning of the word is what doesn't have a number before it. That's what the word, root meaning is. Where it has one, two, three, four, those are the uses mm -hmm. which may or may not be in keeping with the, with the meaning of it. But the root meaning of the word is one summoned or called to one side. Like a person that's on the side, got a flat tire on the side of the road, needs some help, someone pulls in and comes alongside to help them. See, so it's just like that. In the case one that comes alongside, summoned alongside. Now here's an important point to see about that. It's not that the person in need summoned them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It's not what we're talking about here. When I talk about calling on the name of the Lord, that's necessary to do, but that's not what we're talking about. The advocate level, this doesn't have anything to do with what you ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is God that calls this advocate alongside. This is God providing for himself. Amen. It's God who knows his nature. He hates sin, mm -hmm. even if it's in you. Uh -huh. And don't be telling people he hates sin, but he loves the sinner. <laughs> Is that what you're going to tell about the devil? Yeah. Yeah. Would you say this to the devil? Mm -hmm. The Lord hates the devil's sin, but he loves the devil. Would you say that? Mm -hmm. Would you? Truth of the matter is you can't separate the sin from the sinner. Right. That's only God can do that. Amen. 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 That's what this advocate's all about. Right. Amen. God knows something's got to be done about uh -huh. things that irritate God. Something's got to be done about them. They can't be ignored. Yeah. So God provides for this. Amen. That's what confirms His love right there. Amen. It's especially someone who's called to one's aid to help a situation. Now remember, if any man sin, we have an advocate. We've got to have someone help us here. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Because he said, I wrote that you don't sin. You sinned. Need some help now. If you didn't need help, you wouldn't have sinned. <clears throat> Someone called alongside. Another uh, electrical definition of it is alongside to help or a helper or an encourager is another. Or an intercessor or the word comforter is also used in Scripture. The idea is that this person presents the cause of the other person mm -hmm. to someone else, in this case, God. It's not someone that comes to help you like I would help you fix your flat tire. <laughs> that, that parallel breaks down here. That's not what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about someone that, that God provides for himself. Mm -hmm. You're assisted. Some, there's something about sin that ruptures your relationship to God. Yeah even if your name is David. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. There's something about it. I don't think, I don't think this has got across to the modern generation. There's too much looseness about mm -hmm. sin and transgression. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Too much toning down of it. Talking about it like it's not really that serious. Using words like mistakes, and I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no, no, you can't sin without meaning to do it. You can't yeah. sin by accident. Right. Mm -hmm. Any more than you can do righteous by accident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, someone who's going to intercede for the cause of another. Now, there's a number of reasons why this takes place. One is because the person who needs the advocacy is not familiar with certain protocols that are in place. When you come before God, you just like, just can't walk. <laughs> Good morning, God. I've heard people pray this. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they got this. Good morning, God. I, well, let me tell you, I discourage you from coming up in presence of God like that. Angels don't talk to God like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus didn't talk to God like that. And he told you when you address God, here's what you say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Yeah, yeah that's how he taught us. You know, he can't be loose. See, so an advocate covers this because sin makes you nervous in God's presence. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of lose a sense of what's, what's necessary. An advocate, this is just a technical definition here, is uh, one... Because the one to which one is subject is in some way offended. Someone's got to step in the gap and mm -hmm. represent them. Now when Israel sinned at the foot of Mount Sinai, you remember that, that infamous occasion? When Moses was gone for 40 days, they didn't know where he went. They told Aaron, make us gods. Remember, they made the golden calf and they, they reveled and they committed a fornication. First Corinthians 10 says they got drunk and there was a revelry like a college spring break mm -hmm. in our day. Now somebody had to give up between them and God, or boy, they were they were going to be destroyed. That's right. Uh-huh. You see what sin did to Jesus? Mm -hmm. You see what God did to Jesus when the sin of the world was laid on him? Do you see what God did to Jesus? Mm -hmm. He was stricken and smitten of God. Yeah. Huh? He was wounded for our transgressions. Yeah. Who do you think wounded him? Pilate? Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. Who do you think bruised him? That's how God feels about sin. You put sin on Jesus, God will kill him. Amen. That's right. What well, he did. Of course, he raised him too, praise yeah. God. Amen. We thank God for that. So this, uh, an advocate is necessary to step here in between like Moses did. He said, oh, Lord, 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 Lord. He couldn't tell him, you care for these people? He said, oh, remember Abraham. Remember the, what you said to Abraham? These are Abraham's children. He stepped in between, advocated for them. Another cause for advocation is there's things available to the individual that they don't know about. We're going to see that God does this. You see, there's a lot of things. There's a, what we call a plethora, bushel basket full, running over, of things God has, as Scripture says, prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. Eyes not seen, mm -hmm. ears not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them to love Him. Right. So an advocate is one, he knows what's been prepared and he, he'll take measures to get it to the person who doesn't even know the, 
the magnitude of what's prepared for them. Don't you know tonight things that God has for you that you didn't know just maybe just a short while ago? Uh -huh. A few years ago, you had no idea. Amen. Mm -hmm. How did you come into that? Was it just that somebody told you? There's an advocate working for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And God sent someone to tell you. you got to really see. Mm -hmm. See this. Strictly speaking, this is a legal provision. An advocate, there's a heart's involved in this. Understand, because God can't do anything without, a, without his heart being in it. Jesus can't do anything without his heart being in it. See, you can. You can do something mechanically without your heart being in it. I can remember having jobs that uh, before I realized you should work unto the Lord, they were just boring. They bore you. You know, I had boring jobs. You just kind of did it. It's like a kind of a robot. You know, it just kind of went through the motions each day. Your heart wasn't in it. But see, God can't do this. Jesus can't do this. It's not their nature to do anything like this. Uh huh. And so... Uh, He's entered into your salvation by providing mm -hmm. things among which is an advocate. Now, how is this used, word used in Scripture? It's advocate. It's used two times, <clears throat> once in the English and once in the text that I mentioned, and it also I want to mention the first one where it's applied to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It was called a comforter, and the same word is used there, and some of the translations use the word uh, advocate. Mm -hmm. That text is uh, found in John, 14th chapter, verse 16. Except Jesus said, I will send another comforter, another comforter to you. Oh, and that comforter is called advocate. Some versions actually read advocate. The um, New King James Version calls it a counselor. Mm -hmm. The uh, New American Bible Standard Version says it's an advocate. Douay version says a paraclete, which is what we call a transliteration of the word. They took the Greek letters and translated them into English letters, and there's no... In other words, the, the original word, there isn't really a precise parallel in the English language. That, that's why there's like baptism. That's a transliteration of baptizo. It's because there really isn't a precise English word that says what that word says. It means dip, but that's, that's a very shallow meaning. Mm -hmm, yeah. It doesn't just mean dip. It also includes the idea of wash, like you put under and wash. It includes that idea. It also includes the idea of coming up, mm -hmm. doctrinally. So see, there isn't a word, that's, that's why we have words like, words like that that are what they call transliterations. There's not an exact parallel word. That's the way it is with this word here. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger word than the, than the language we have. And the language we have. Now this is one of the problems translators have with the scripture. Mm -hmm. Moving scripture from one language to another is sometimes the language is going to is a, is a too little, it's a small, mm -hmm. small language. And so they, that takes a lot of understanding to try and capture the idea. That's why they had the Amplified Bible. That's, that was the idea behind it. They saw there, there was more in the word than it wasn't just a word for word. You, mm -hmm. There's some things you can't translate word for word. When uh, Brother Aaron, Brother Gene, myself preached in Pakistan, We'd say a sentence to be you know, a few words long, and they'd say a sentence to be like 20, 30, 40 words long. Mm -hmm. So we might say a big long sentence, and they give a translation of a little, little bitty sentence. That means they're in that particular area, their language is more abundant. Well, that's, that's the kind of thing we have, we have here. Now, within this context, John 14, 18, within this context, where dealing with Jesus is dealing, he's going to be gone. He's been with them for three, about three and a half years. He's going away. He's going to leave a void. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. When you've been with Jesus, when he's not around, it's a, it's a big hole there. Yeah. Amen. And you're accustomed to being with Christ, and all of a sudden you're not experiencing this. It, it's, it's a void. He's covering his disciples. He's like, I'm going to send a comforter, an advocate, or someone in between. Someone's going to come along your side. Someone is going to do what I'm doing. It's like another Jesus. Because in, in speaking of sending the Holy Spirit to them, he said, I will come unto you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technically, it was the Holy Spirit that came, but the Holy Spirit came and brought all of Jesus' resources, brought all of Jesus' identity, mm -hmm. brought it to them. The Spirit is insubordinate 
he's a subordinate of Jesus. He's not upstaging Jesus. See, some uh, representations of Jesus today, some some denominations that they they don't have the gospel of Christ. They have the gospel of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they talk right. about a lot. And in their view of things, the Holy Spirit kind of upstages Jesus. So whether you, if you're saved by the blood of Christ, that's nice. But if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's nicer. This must really sound serious to God. Huh? That the first blessing is Jesus, the second blessing is the Spirit. This must really sound peculiar to angels. Yeah, amen. Now, making a point here that, that the Holy Amen. Spirit is taking the place of Christ. He's supplying what Christ left when he went back to heaven. Yeah. He's, he's taking the ministry over. In fact, he's taking it a little further. Because when Jesus went to heaven, he, he prepared the way for God to receive us by taking away our sin, mm -hmm. by destroying the devil, by spoiling principalities and powers, see, by reconciling us to God, by making peace with God through the blood of Christ. He did all these things that were necessary for us to have some kind of a relationship with God. Now the Holy Spirit, He comes to apply that. Jesus said of Him, I will send you another comforter. Mm -hmm. Who was the first comforter? It was Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was the first comforter. So yeah. you get a picture. This is an advocate now. Mm -hmm. It's an advocate. And He's going to be called alongside alongside the believer himself as the first word of the comforter of the advocate now first john 2 1 our text uses it again if any man said we have an advocate with the father so this, uh, this is a different kind of advocate the same work but first advocate spirit is by us mm -hmm. in us second advocate with the father yeah. Yeah. so you've got to have both heaven and earth have to be covered in this if you're going to get to heaven, you got to have heaven and earth got to be covered. Yeah. you got to have someone on earth that's helping us, someone in heaven. That's how hard it is to be saved. Now, that's how hard it is to Amen. get to heaven. you got to have someone in heaven Amen. pleading your case for you. Someone on earth pleading your case for Amen. you. That's an advocate. Now, there's, a need for, uh, there's a need for the presence of Jesus with God. He's an advocate with the Father. The NIV reads, he's one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Defense? See? Some people have a view of God that you don't even need any kind of defense. Yeah. Before God. Well, when you sin, you've got to have someone defending you. Why? Well, I asked some of those Israelites at Sinai. 3,000 of them died at the given of the law. They could tell you, oh, it's good to have someone defending you. However you may think, you, however close now, you may think you are to God. When it comes to the matter of sin, there better be someone to defend you mm -hmm. to God. Because His nature lashes out against sin. Mm -hmm. That's His nature. And His nature is such that in the, there's, there's a appointed day, brothers and sisters, there's a appointed day when God's going to confront eyeball to eyeball sin. Amen. And when he does, no sinner is going to survive. Right. right. And the whole Amen. purpose of salvation is get you out of that category before that Amen. day comes. Because yeah. yeah. if you're not out of that category, yeah. when Jesus comes, uh -huh. you're out. That's it. Yeah. That's Amen. right. And if you are out of it, it doesn't make any difference if heaven and earth passes away. You're in. Nobody Amen. can. Nobody Amen. can. See, that's this advocate with the Father. You have to have this advocate. The uh, basic Bible language says we have a friend and a helper with the Father. Mm -hmm. So I'm it's a hard, it's a hard to put this into into words. See, that's why these translations use these different terminologies. It's a big concept. Mm -hmm. The uh, Darby's version he just says he's, he's, there's a patron. Mm -hmm. A patron is a guardian or protector. Uh, Roman Catholic doctrine, they have patron saints. You may have heard people talk about patron saints. What a patron saint is, they, their doctrine, they just, it's a, someone that goes along with you as a protector. And so that, that's what the God, Jesus is. He's a protector. It's what he is. Or to help and defend. The Amplified Bible says one who will intercede for us. So as you can see, there's no, there's no exact word that parallels what advocate is. But here's, here's what we've got to work with. Now, here's the facts of the case. 
The facts of the case, we have an advocate on earth in us, and we got an advocate in heaven with God. That's what we got to work with. Now let's look at the doctrine of the advocacy. The doctrine of it. Men may have been justified, but they've not been made independent from God. Whatever your situation is in Christ, it does not gloss sin. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. He wipes the slate clean. Yeah, but you had better keep it clean. Mm -hmm. You say, well, how can we do this? When you sin. When you sin mm -hmm. Not two, three, four, five days <laughs> later, year later, ten years later. When you sin. Mm -hmm. Confess your sin. Mm -hmm. And God is faithful and just and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. See? Amen. The advocate is provided in view of that situation. Yeah. For God to forgive you, so, if you ignore the resources you have in Christ, which you have to do to sin, am I right? Uh -huh. yeah. You have to close your eyes to sin, mm -hmm. to God. You have to close. In order to sin, you have to forget mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to forget the day of judgment, mm -hmm. don't you? You have to forget that Jesus is coming again. Mm -hmm. You have to forget you're going to give an account for the deeds in the body, whether good or bad. You have to forget all that to sin. You have to do it. And, and none of us can say we haven't done it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the high advocate comes in. Yeah. See, Jesus said when he was on earth, I only do what pleases the Father. Mm -hmm. That's all I do. Yeah. God said to Jesus, this is my well-beloved son. I'm well pleased in him. Mm -hmm. So he's in good standing, 100% good standing. So if he takes up the cause, God will listen to him. Amen. 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 There's no offense in Jesus. He's separate from sinners. Mm -hmm. See, he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he's separate from sinners. That's Hebrews 7.26. Why? Because you've got to have an advocate that's mm -hmm. not a sinner. Separate. So he, he's the advocate. All right, now let's look at the uh, Holy Spirit's advocacy for the, with us. Now this uh, statement is made about this. It's a very peculiar section of Scripture. You, I, can, you know, I don't know how long you've been a Christian, but I can, I can guarantee you, you, you could count on one hand the number of times in your entire lifetime you've heard this text preached on. If you're, norm, if you're what they might call a normal. <laughs> this is not preached on very much. Yeah. I've never been to any of the great conventions that ever did cover this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. If adv if advocacy is that serious, is as serious as Scripture suggests, mm -hmm. then you would think the saints who have to grapple with sin and resist the devil and keep themselves pure, they'd be hearing a lot about this mm -hmm. adv advocacy of the, of the Holy Spirit. Well, here's what the text says, Romans 8, 25 through 28. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Mm -hmm. This is the con providing a little context here. Mm -hmm. We're making, I'm making a bucket. We can throw these thoughts in to do a little thinking about them. Mm -hmm. Here's the situation. He said that we're saved by hope, Romans 8, 24. And he said, hope that saves not hope. Mm -hmm. Man sees, why does he hope for it? But we, if a person hopes for something he doesn't have in his hand, he, he patiently waits for it, that he endures whatever he's got to endure in anticipation of receiving what he knows is coming. Mm -hmm. All right, now in that context, he says, likewise, likewise, mm -hmm. in the same way, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. Mm -hmm. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. Now remember, we said that there's things prepared for the people they don't yeah. know about. Mm -hmm. So what do you do while you're growing up to find out about them? What about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. God provided an advocate about that situation. Mm -hmm. You don't come into Christ with all the understanding about everything God has for you. Mm -hmm. Some of us waited a long time after we were born again before we found out some of these things. Yeah. Just by in the process of growth, you find out about them. But until then, do you do without them? Well, we have you know. No, no, God's provided an ad, um, advocate for us. The Holy Spirit, likewise the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. 
That is, he doesn't talk to God in the English language. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. What he says to God, you couldn't say. If you could say it, then he'd let you say it. Mm -hmm. That's the way the economy works. Mm -hmm. If you know enough to say it, then the Holy Spirit's not going to say it for you. You say it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here the situation is, we don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. You might have a sense, I need, I need something. I don't know what it is. What, and you, don't let it frustrate you now. God's covered this base. Mm -hmm. And you will have this. You, believe me, if you're serious about God, you're going to have a feeling, I need something. I don't know what it is. What do I do? Well, God's done something about this. He's put an advocate <clears throat> inside you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit himself, it says the Holy Spirit itself, we would say himself, as he personally does this. Mm -hmm. He does, now, he's not going to talk to you. He's not going to talk through you. And groanings that can't be uttered, it's not even in speech. Yeah, that's right. You see, it's in the, like, think of the Holy Spirit as his desires can, his desires can be understood. Yeah. See, if you, were, if you were to try and communicate to me your desires, you'd have to say it. I, yeah, I couldn't just read your desires. But see, God can read the desires of the, yeah. of the Spirit. The long as, in other words... The Holy Spirit has desires for you. Yeah. James talked about this. He said, do you think the Scripture say in, in, say in a vain the Spirit that dwelleth in you lusts to envy? Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit he's talking about. The Holy Spirit has great ambitions for yeah. you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why you don't want to resist Him, mm -hmm. quench Him, grieve Him. But he's got, he's got a, he doesn't, he's not going to tell you about them. He's going to tell God about them because these things have to come from God. Mm -hmm. God didn't leave a warehouse of benefits down here on earth and you just go to the warehouse and pick and choose. The things are in heaven. they got to come down. Yeah. How do they get down? Particularly if you don't even know about them, how do they get down? Yeah? Here comes the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He makes intercession with groans that can be uttered, cannot be uttered. So he's not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry he's not talking about speaking in tongues because tongues can be uttered. Yeah, that's right. yeah. These can't be uttered. Mm -hmm. And he that searcheth the hearts, that's God, mm -hmm. so the God, he knows what is the mind, not words, not words now. Mm -hmm. He knows what is the mind yeah. of the Spirit mm -hmm. because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. That is, the Spirit's a grand coordinator. Yeah. He coordinates need with supply. Yeah. God supplies what you need. Yeah. Uh, scripture says you didn't know what you need. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a communication between the Father and the mind of the Spirit. Because He makes intercession according to the will of God. He's not driven by what you want. He's driven by what you need. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the complication is sometimes what we want obscures what we need. Mm -hmm. See? Boy, talk about salvation being detailed. This is, this is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. God doesn't wait till you want it mm -hmm. and can define it. He doesn't wait till then. He supplies the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we know, now how does all this wash out? About you are waiting for what's reserved for you. The Holy Spirit's there the situation is you don't know what, what to ask for. Mm -hmm. As you are by the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you according to the will of God. He says, and we know that all things work together for good. You mean this has something to do with everything working together for good? Yes, this has a lot to do yeah. with how God works everything together for your good. It's just not happenstance. Right. It's just not everything just all works out. Mm -hmm. This involves the Holy Spirit. Who's making intercession for you when you're in this? You just don't understand what you need. So we say what you need for the hour. When you're Joseph and you go down into Egypt, you may not know you're going to be a considerable number of years in prison. Yeah. You, you might not go down there with that knowledge. Yeah, but God knows about this. Amen. Again, there's a, he may he breaks provision for you to be readied for whatever's coming your way. Well, it's a wonderful text of a scripture. This, the God knows the mind of the Spirit. So in this way, this is one way God works everything together. Now in the matter, that's, that's in the matter of just every day living in Christ. 
You have an advocate. Mm -hmm. Now, in a matter of sin, 1 John 2, 1, first of all, of course, the objective is sin not. Mm -hmm. That's the objective. So someone says, what's the plan of God for my life? See, here it is. I got it. Uh -huh. Sin not. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Sin not. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, these days, I suppose people say, well, I don't even know what sin is. If you listen to your conscience, it'll define it for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. At least in rough enough terms, you'll kind of be serious about matters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you almost hear your conscience saying, stay away, stay away, stay away. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't say that. Don't do that. Your conscience. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you've got, if you've always got earphones on, and you're always being entertained, and you never seriously you drowns out the spirit, mm -hmm. and so you just blunder through life like a bull in a china shop. You, yeah. you never really are cautious yeah. because you're distracted. We're living in this kind of society. That's mm -hmm. why, that's why mm -hmm. I'm saying this. This is a society that's calling out with all kind of distractions. None of them are deep. Yeah. They're, they're all multifarious and on the surface and shallow and feelings and emotion and do it at the spur of the moment. And see, that, that stifles your conscience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Conscience is a profound part of your person. Mm -hmm. If you're never serious, like your ears get deaf, you can't hear your own conscience mm -hmm. saying, stay away, Amen. be alert, wake, right. be awake. Sin not. And uh, the second is that there's, if you do sin, if. Uh, God expects you not to. You may expect to sin. God expects you not to sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's an impossible situation. Well, it, it'll sure cut down on the frequency of sin. You can take this seriously. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. Cut down the frequency of it. Sin's accepted if any man sin. And third, the advocacy is with the Father. Just like it was in the Spirit. The Spirit spoke to the Father. The Father knew the mind of the Spirit. So see, as soon as you come into sin, you, you're out of the picture now. Yeah. Some, someone's got to take over your interest now. Mm -hmm. You can't plead your own case now. Well, I understand David said against thee and the only have I sinned. In that sense, you're confessing your sin, yes. But you never try and explain to God why you sin. Uh -huh. And don't explain it to us either. Yeah. Yeah. We're really not interested in, in, in anybody explaining why they sin. Mm -hmm. We know why you sinned. You wanted to sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. mm -hmm. That's what the trouble was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, see, the psych, we got the psychiatrist and the counselors and yeah. all these people, and they'll say, well, it's like it's in your genes. That's where it is. It's, a, it's your uh, gen uh, genetic makeup. Well, it isn't where it is at all. It's, unless it's a genetic makeup of Adam. Now, we will buy, yeah. buy into that. It's in the lineage of Adam. But see, there's people that their whole business is like trying to explain why people did this and that. They're trying to explain it. That's a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Trying to explain why you sin. Just confess that you sin. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they count on this advocacy with the Father. Yeah. The advocacy is made by the righteous one. <laughs> If someone's going to speak for you, believe me, you're not going to go down to the local bar and ask somebody to talk to God for you. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you'll meet someone that they are, you used to call them winos, you know, they're slave to drink, and they'll, they'll talk about how much they love God and things like that. I always like to tell them, well, whatever you think about God, you better let me talk for you. Mm -hmm. Don't be talking to God about me. But someone says to you, look, I've been hurt about your case and I'll be praying for you. That's good. Well, does God hear your prayers? I'd like to know that first mm -hmm. before you pray for me. Like, does God even listen to you when you pray? Mm -hmm. This is the way it is. I'm just telling you the way it is. You don't want someone talking to God for you that's not righteous and that God doesn't hear. Mm -hmm. And if they do, God does hear, you do want Him praying for you. Yeah. Amen. Jesus Christ the righteous. To be effective, salvation must have an advocate or a helper. Mm -hmm. Got to have an advocate on earth. Got to have an advocate in heaven. Got to have someone that comes along your side to identify <coughs> and then presents what you need to the Father. Then you got to have someone in heaven that defends you yeah. and stands in the gap and says, I died for him. This was not his manner. He was snared on this, Father. This really wasn't his preference. You snared on this. I died for him. Let my blood lay that sin to my account. 
Got to have someone in heaven doing it. See uh, what is involved in you being saved? If you can see it right, it's hard to be lost. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. you got to you got to just barge past all of your conscience. <laughs> barge past the law of God. Ignore the convicting of the Holy Spirit. Ignore the day of judgment. Ignore the Bible. you got to ignore the people of God. Shut God out of your life before you can even sin. you got to do all this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then once you come into Christ, if you'll abide in Him, of course Jesus said, abide in me. If you don't, God will cut you off. Yeah. That's it. You've got to maintain this association, this consciousness of Christ. It's a two-way thing. Mm -hmm. Abiding is a two-way thing. The life's coming to you and the fruit's going to God. See, mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And if you do this, then you've got these Holy Spirit speaking to God about what you need. And you got Jesus speaking to God about who you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's some good stuff, isn't it? Amen. Amen. There must be a person uh, associated with ourselves that's from the Father. Uh, Galatians 4, 6 says, Because you're sons, mm -hmm. because you're sons, God has sent for the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Yeah. Who's crying? <laughs> it's a Spirit. Abba, Father. He's crying out of you. Mm -hmm. He's been blended with your spirit. And he's crying, Abba, Father, to God. See? See, why? Because you're a son. That's why. Mm -hmm. Not because you're good, because you're a son. Yeah. That's why. Not because you did everything perfect, because you're a son. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> Amen. Pleading to the Father. Then in heaven, here's a statement made about the, the uh, advocate in heaven. Because he ever lives, we see he's always alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives mm -hmm. to make intercession for the saints. Mm -hmm. See? If Jesus were to stop interceding for you today, you'd drop right down into hell. Amen. That's right. That'd be it. Mm -hmm. He's able to save. Yeah. Did you catch that? He's not talking about now his relationship to people that are out of Christ, mm -hmm. alienated from the life of God, cut off from God, sinners. He's not, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about those who are coming to God. Not coming initially. They're coming from earth to heaven. They're in progress of coming to God. Because that's where we're all going to end up. Yeah. Every person that's ever lived is going to end up standing before God. Amen. The difference between people that are saved and people that aren't, is they're, they're coming deliberately. Mm -hmm. they set their compass, heaven, and they're headed toward it, and Jesus is able. That sounds to me like salvation is a very difficult process mm -hmm. to get people from captivity to Satan, to reconciliation to God, from being enemies, to being friends, Sounds to me like that's a large, large work, and it is a large work. Mm -hmm. I think that there's been a great disservice among men, a great disservice by saying it's easy to be saved. No, it's not easy to be saved. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus is involved. That's why the Holy Spirit's Amen. involved. That's why the Father's involved. That's why angels are involved. That's why apostles and prophets are involved. That's why pastors and teachers are involved. That's why the church is involved. No, it's not easy to be saved. Mm -hmm. If you structure a form of religion where it's easy, we like we just have a one service on Sunday, and just to show you how understanding we are, we'll have a special service for the contemporary folk and we'll have a special service for the traditional folk because whatever we do we don't want everybody to be of one mind even though God tells us to be mm -hmm. what I'm telling you is there's been a, a framework of Christianity set up that it takes very little effort mm -hmm. uh -huh. to be a Christian mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right. You don't really have to read the Bible very much. You sure don't have to pray much. We don't. You don't have to like go to quote go to church much, and mm -hmm. it will make it as brief and short as possible, so you can get to the restaurants sooner than everybody else and have a lot of time to be entertained. And it's easy. But see, when you get down into the Bible, the Word of God, you get the picture. This isn't easy at all yeah. because God, only God, could even address this challenge of yeah. the complication Amen. involved in saving people. 
Amen. an exceedingly broad work. <clears throat> and neither of these advocates, Holy Spirit in you, Christ with the Father, they don't work independently of one another. They work in, in concert with one another. The Holy Spirit is always remembering, working in view of what Jesus did. Jesus is interceding in view of what the Holy Spirit is doing. See, they're all, they're all working harmoniously and together. Now the doctrine is <laughs> that you cannot escape if you neglect salvation. Yep. That's the doctrine. Here's the question put to people, to the church, Hebrews 2, 3. How? How can we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Well, it's a rhetorical question. It's not asking for an answer. It's a rhetorical question. It's saying you can't. If you neglect this, you can't escape because God put too much investment in this yeah, to bring people to glory who are ignoring his salvation. Uh -huh. Of course, I know that there are a great number of people that are decided handicapped because they don't hear a whole lot about the salvation of God. Uh -huh. When they think salvation, they're thinking about rescuing sinners. They're not thinking about the whole process that leads up to God. They're not thinking about that at all. But God is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is. Jesus is an interceding for the folk at the bar. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone think that? The Holy Spirit, He's not interceding for people down at the nightclubs or the casinos over here in Oklahoma. That's not who He's speaking for. Amen. He's interceding for the sons of God. Jesus Amen. is interceding for His children. Amen. Amen. Which means I, I'm quite, the, quite grateful for this whole situation because the older I have become, I become more acutely aware of my need yeah. for a Savior. So God is not unrighteous. He can't have immediate dealings with unrighteous people. When a righteous God touches a sinful man, guess what happens to the sinful man? He's out of there. He's gone. God drew near to Sinai. Symbolically, it says like his feet touched the mountain, which means he didn't like he didn't come on his fullness of his person, just a little bit. Just a little bit. The whole Sinaitic Peninsula shook and quaked and lit up with fire. And even Moses, Moses, with whom God spoke face to face and mouth to mouth, Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Yeah. Why? Because that's a righteous God. Amen. That's why God's got these buffers mm -hmm. between Him and sinners. To those who come to God, come to Him through Christ, He's got this buffer of Christ at His right hand side. Yeah. Why? To ensure that you get mercy. Because yeah. if Christ wasn't there, that isn't what you'd get. That's right. Mercy. Uzzah, you remember that Uzzah? Mm -hmm. They were taking moving the Ark of the Covenant. It was on an ox cart, and they hit a little chug hole, and the ox cart jostled, and the Ark of the Covenant started to fall off. This is the most sacred piece of furniture Israel had. And Uzzah stuck his hand out to stop the Ark from falling. God struck him dead right there. If you want to know how sensitive God is, these texts are in Scripture to teach us, thank God God's made provision that Amen. that won't happen every time. Amen. Mm -hmm. See? That's not to promote loose living, it's to promote thankful living. Yes. Mm -hmm. See? And it will do it. Mm -hmm. The Spirit, He knows there's needs. I, I wonder sometimes, this in my holy imagination, what the Holy Spirit might must think of us when we, He knows what a vast resource is available to us. Mm -hmm. And we're asking for things like, could I have a new pair of shoes, you know, and, like someone in Joplin inherited a billion dollars. You say, what are you going to do, brother, with that billion dollars? I'm going to get me a new pair of shoelaces. This is what I'm going to do. And put a new set of tires on my 47 Oldsmobile. You say, well, that doesn't sound like, doesn't sound like you realize how many resources you have. But there's Christians doing this. Mm -hmm. Just want a few just to kind of make it take you through the day and so forth. God will not respond directly to blundering speech. That's why the Holy Spirit makes the intercession. Mm -hmm. so you've got to see this. You've got to see this. What a gracious provision this is. And then if you bank on this, it won't make you lazy. Mm -hmm. It'll make you sober and alert. Mm -hmm. You'll say, well, I, I, I'm going to do the best I can, 
And even though I'm, I've learned by experience that that's not good enough, still God's going to receive it. It's come from my heart. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm striving, striving to reach the goal. I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm seeking first the kingdom of God's righteousness. And I'll be the first to tell you, it's not really good enough. I need to be more. But I'm banking on this Holy Spirit making intercession for me. I'm banking on Jesus at the right hand of God. And see, God's banking on him too. So Jesus, uh, even occasional sin, has alienating powers. That's why Jesus is there. Well, there's a cause for the saints to move forward, not backward. Yep. Amen. See, no, no person of God should be in a backward stance. Mm -hmm. Like if, you, if you've been in Christ for some time, and, and maybe there was a time back there in the past when you were closer to God than you are now, mm -hmm. you, know, you really got to get out of that situation. There's there'd been, there'd been too much, uh -huh. too much invested. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. For us. It could be Amen. there could even be a thing like last week or a month ago or six mm -hmm. months ago you actually were had made greater progress than you did than you are tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, you really, really that, that can't be. You just got to reconcile yourself. This can't be. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you reconcile yourself to that, then the intercessors kick in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Then the Holy Spirit starts making intercessions. Because if you're serious. Believe me when I tell you the Spirit and Jesus are serious too. Mm -hmm. But they're not serious and we're not serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 